In this video, we're going to explore the type of critical point that's called a saddle point. And the three most common types are local maxes, local mins, and saddle points themselves. There are more rare and obscure types, but these are the most common three. Notice that a saddle point is something new in multivariate calculus. There is no analogous point like this in single variable calculus. So what is a saddle point? Well, first of all, it has to be a critical point. So that's the gradient of f equals 0, 0, or what we said before, breaking that into the partial derivatives, both partial derivatives equal 0. On a contour, what it will look like is a crossing of two contour lines. So we see that here. We have a contour line and a contour line. They meet at this intersection here, and that would be our saddle point. Again, notice that's different from a local maximum or minimum where we see nested contours with sort of circular shapes once we get close to the local max or min. Well, what about the shape as a surface? What we see is this configuration here, which is shaped like the saddle on a horse. And what it has is one direction in which it's not so much uphill, but more that it's concave up. So the saddle point is the point right here in one direction. We can imagine that we're coming down, 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 and then flattening out. That's capturing our partial derivatives equals zero. But there's some other direction in which we would be going up and up and leveling out, but then going down on the other side. And that indicates there's a direction in which the surface is concave down, all based on the same point. If we contrast that with a local maximum, a local maximum would be concave down in every direction that we care to pick. The saddle point's a little more interesting, has a more varied concavity around it. Let's apply this to an example, looking at contour diagrams first. We're going to look at a contour diagram and identify those three types of critical points, local maxes, mins, and saddle points. And then, restricting ourselves to the domain shown, we're going to identify the global max and the global min on the region. So again, what we're going to do is fix our attention only on this region here and study inside and see what's going on. Interpreting this as a top-down view with the contour numbers representing the heights of the function, we can very quickly identify a local max here and 9, 10, 11, a local max in the interior of this point or those nested contours and five, six, uh, here we're going downhill. We use a different color here. This will be a local minimum at the center of those contours. Nine, 10, 11 is going up. This will be a local max. And seven, six going downhill here at the center of those contours will be a local minimum. And oh, there's one hiding in here. Nine, eight, there would be maybe one last local minimum hiding in the interior of that contour circle there. Well, that's interesting though, because we haven't seen any saddle points in this contour diagram yet. However, it feels like there should be some because if we go back to the picture for a moment, anytime we have a maximum and a maximum, there should be a path down between them. And at some point along that path, we feel like we should hit a local well, it's a pass, if you think about mountain passes, two peaks on this side, but then two valleys adjacent on the other side. And we can actually see that in this configuration here. Imagine walking from this peak down, down, down. Oh, then it sort of flattens out for a second on that path and then comes back up as we reach this coordinate here. So we have a down then up feel along this trajectory. But on this side, we're at height five, then six, then here we're going up and up and up and up and then we would flatten out here somewhere and then go back down towards this. And so what that leads us to think is that there's some location in between here and maybe it's at height 8.5. Notice we have a contour height 8, 9. There will be something in the middle here and that unseen on our diagram here, we'll say around 8.5, would give us a height at which there are contours from this mountain coming down, this valley coming up, 
and eventually they're going to meet together so we have a saddle point. So in some sense we have to infer saddle points and contour diagrams sometimes if the height at which this crossing happens is not a nice integer. Notice that's not a problem at all for local maxes and mins. All we need to look for are the nested circles. Well, if we look further afield, we might also find, imagine contours here, there would be another contour coming in this way, and oh, that same contour, in fact, might meet again with another contour line on this side. So we might have another saddle over here, and maybe there are others. These, these become trickier to identify. Let's take a look at what the actual contour diagram is if we add more contours. Here we've done some extra work to identify the height at which the contours coming down off this hill and down off this hill meet each other, and also the same contour height coming uh, off this hill and off this hill where we get that cross formation again for this diagram. And for this particular contour diagram, those are the only two saddle points. Just be aware that they may or may not be immediately visible on a contour diagram that we traditionally draw with just nice evenly spaced Z levels. Now, last but not least, we were also asked to identify the global max and mins. What we're going to take advantage of here is that for a continuous function on a closed and bounded domain, which is what we have here. We have a region that we don't have to, uh, we aren't going to escape, and which the boundaries are included, that's closed and bounded. And if that's the case, then the maximums, the global maxes and mins, are on the boundary or at a critical point. In the interior. We'll just say critical point here. So we first scan the boundary. We already have the critical points. So we scan the boundary and we see the heights we're talking about there are around height 8, height 7, around height 8. There's no exceptional values. We're calling if we did have a corner which had a higher value, we typically see contours edging up towards that point. We don't see that here. So we can simply look at the critical points for this problem here. Once we've identified that as our search pattern, we look here, we see ah, height 16. There are no other heights even close to that. So that is also going to be our global maximum. And scanning all the heights for the minima, we have three local minima, one's at height 8, height 5-ish, ah, height 2. So this would be our global minimum on this domain. We can't say what happens outside of it, but on the region shown, that will be the global minimum.